Good morning. I mean, good afternoon. I think I speak as hard as that. Well, it looks like the old clock on the wall says it's time to start the meeting, so ever please rise, do a little pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning. 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 Good
the applicant was made aware that this was in violation and he had two options. One option was to remove it. The other option was to come back to the board to ask for the overhang extension. Um, there's an application before you today to uh, allow for the extension. Um, staff, you know, uh, is uh, questioning that extension a little bit. It's there, it's constructed. Um, so this is an after the fact request and we would be recommending denial of it, but the applicant had an opportunity to come to the board today to request the uh, approval of that for eight by 14 uh, extension. So uh, Scott or Nathan, if you wanted to explain a little bit in terms of your take on that and then the board can have discussions and there is a neighbor here for this one as well. I guess I don't see what the, I mean, there was a mix up of paperwork from the beginning. My application said 14 by 28 shed and the building, the building plans that were provided were like for 12 by 24 or something. It was just a mix up of paperwork. So the original plans had that in there. No, that's not correct. So what you have there is, is a covered patio. That's what you're in essence built on. I'm sorry? In addition. Is that correct? I, I, didn't, I didn't hear you. All you it did was, it looks to me like you got a covered patio there in the front yeah. of that garage. That's all you added extra? You didn't actually add anything to the garage itself? No. Anybody got any questions? Other? There's a neighbor that's here as well, and I don't know if you're done with your, okay. I don't know if you'd like to ask the neighbor if he has any questions, which I think you should. Which one is the neighbor? He'll, I would imagine he would come up. Mr. Winkle, do you have anything you'd like to add? Could you please speak up to the microphone? We have people online that can't hear if you don't speak into the microphone. Appreciate that. I think I understood you correctly before you said you were inclined to deny it. <laughs> that was staff's recommendation, that's correct. I can't imagine why. If that's your statement, that's fine. Um, first of all, he's paying for a second application for the variance, am I correct? He did have to do that, that's correct. Yeah, variances are expensive. Correct, that's why you submit what you're proposing initially. Correct. Correct. And I think if that amount of overhang is there, I think you should be able to fly with that. I don't think the board should deny it. Well, it doesn't meet the requirements and that's why he's here. He's done more than he was allowed to do. And that's what the discussion is here for today. So that's what we're here for and that's why he's making that application. And I, I understand that, that point, but I just don't think that that's the right way to do it. You know, I go back 10 years ago and my property over there, I wanted to put a driveway in. The building code says a driveway must be paved and or asphaltic. My driveway there at that house, which I purchased at that time, had nothing but gravel, sand, and weeds. So then I find out in order to do what the city code requires to be done, that I had to pay for a variance, $275. $275 back then bought almost all the concrete for that driveway. So this is what I don't understand with the politics in these variances. I thought it was unfair to have to pay for a variance for me, and I understand where he's coming from now. I paid for a variance to do what the building code and law required. Yeah, I, I can't speak to the variances he's speaking of. Do you have any more additional input on this matter? No, no. Okay. So I think you, you don't object to, is that my understanding? What's that? You do not object to his Absolutely not. porch business? Absolutely not. Okay, thank you. Gentlemen uh, and lady, young lady, we'll uh, entertain a motion to either approve this or disapprove it. What was the reason Oops. for the overhaul? Just I understand if that's how that was originally approved in your mind, that it was sure. approved that way. But what's the purpose for the overhang? Just aesthetics. Okay. Just to have a place for the, maybe a, I don't know, patio furniture. Okay. Kids can play out there. I don't know. Just aesthetics. 
I make a motion to approve. Is there a second to that motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It's Carrie. I sure heard about the trouble if you got yourself a covered porch. All right. Um, a couple of things with that. Got to get the permit. Just need to update that and then just needs to get done. And so you can work with Jeff on that. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Thank you. The next variance application is a Kurt Wesley requesting a rear, uh, raise existing garage and build a 28 by 38 garage, 25 feet tall, with attic storage. This will be at 2004 Lakeshore Drive. Could you step up to the podium, please? Are there any neighbors here objecting to whatever he's requesting? It was very uh, none. Kurt, it was, it was a 32 by 28. You said 38. <laughs> We have in the application 28 by 38. Oh, it's 32 by 28. I wrote 28 or 38 on there. Because the drawings all showed 32. Did I really write that on there? And that's my error. Do you have the file over there that you could confirm, Lenny? I've got it. I'm looking at it right now. <clears throat> that application doesn't have the dimensions on it. I'm just going to look It is in the PowerPoint. Oh, yep. Okay. So, yes. So, it is 32 by 28. Okay. Sounds good. All right, go ahead, Kurt. Um, have you guys reviewed the, the presentation at all that I put together? Uh, I don't want to repeat anything if you guys... Go ahead and repeat. Okay. Um, so what I would like to do is tear down the existing garage, which is a 20 by 20, and replace it with a 32 by, or a 32 by 28 garage. Um, I have a rendering in the deck that shows that I want it to match the aesthetics of the house which I feel right there, which I feel is very important, especially with the location of the house. So I, I'm, hence the, the roof pitch is also st steeper than what you normally see. Um, and I figured if I had that, I might as well turn that into storage. So you you have a dormer on there now on that garage? No, oh, um, you'll see some pictures coming up here that the garage is a twenty by twenty. It just um, you can see the garage in the pictures. If you go down a little bit more, there's a couple more. There's a garage right there. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be torn down, and then um, replaced with that rendering that you saw previously. So the current garage is a twenty by twenty by eighteen foot tall. And this new one will be 32 by 28 by 25 foot tall to match the house. What are your plans to get this completed? Um, million dollar question is about contractors. Uh, originally, I had one lined up to start in May, but that got pushed out because another job came along. So I don't know. Um, he said maybe middle, middle of uh, summer to fall. That's what he mentioned. So I'm kind of at their mercy right now. Your goal would be to have it done this year? Yes. Okay. Anybody else have any questions of you? I make a motion to approve. Ed, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Uh, I'll second. If, if, if I can, is the, uh, the city just Kevin? Or does the city have any position on this? We got a motion that's made and seconded to approve us. Right. Well, thanks. I, I, I can. Uh, so, so a couple things. Um, 
the typical garage is a maximum of 15 feet high. So he's looking at uh, designing this in such a way that allows for the um, second floor and then the square footage and things like that is a little bit um, larger. So typically this is, you know, that's why he's here today. Mm -hmm. But from a design perspective and things like that, they've done a nice job uh, trying to uh, blend it in. So um, there wasn't necessarily an objection. Okay. So there's a motion and a second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Congratulations, Gus. Oh, thank all you right. very much. Next uh, applicant we have is Matthew Hardy, who I don't think is here, is he? he Matthew, California. are you on the line or is anyone here representing Matthew? As I recall, this Matthew lives in California or something. Uh, hang on one second. He's on. Can you hear us, Matthew? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Don, would you like to read the <laughs> please? Okay, you're requesting to pave a nine by six wide driveway up to and within a few inches of the side lot line on the north side of the house to access the garage in the backyard at 1719 South 13th Street. Is that correct? Uh, Matthew? Yes. Yes, sir. Matthew, would you be able to go through a little bit of uh, the things you've done at the house and what you're trying to accomplish here and the reason for the request? Well, we're, we're simply, we're just trying to uh, pave the driveway. Um, I guess there's gravel and dirt as it is now. Um, I, pr I just purchased the property, um, I think a few months ago within six months and uh, just it, it, I purchased it with this needing to be done. So uh, I'm just trying to address it, you know, make sure it looks nice and um, you know, is, is up to, to, to code. Matthew, could you uh, inform the board the other types of things that you've done with the property? Um, I haven't done anything yet. Um, we're kind of in the middle of uh, winter, so um, I have plans to do to some minor improvements, but uh, this is the main improvement that needs to be done initially. Did did you do the siding or did the previous owner? Previous owner. Okay. So um, the board members may possibly remember we had looked at this maybe two years ago. Um, and uh, at that time, the owner had not been doing some of the improvements. Um, there's been uh, a significant amount of improvement done here, siding, uh, roofing, it looked like, and um, this, this uh, uh, driveway is probably one of the last things that would be needed to kind of improve the overall look and feel of the property. Um, uh, I know, Kevin, you're not voting on this one. Did you want to add anything at all as manager of the property that I might be missing or not informing the board? Um, I don't. I don't think there's anything that that came to my attention other than this, just the driveway area that has to be done. But nothing's come to my attention prior to that. Okay. So staff wasn't objecting. I think the biggest thing here is anytime we have those zero lot lines, we just need to make sure that the conditions there, that it's draining towards the property and things of that nature. So staff was uh, recommending approval of the uh, variance. So I'll entertain a motion uh, for somebody that we approve this. I have another question though. I remember the neighbor having a dispute about that fence. So is that still the same neighbor? I don't know the answer to that. Um, that was one of the things that was fairly contentious at the last meeting. Um, I don't know whether or not the owner has had any dealings, but we send out notice to all of the property owners within 100 feet, and there is no one here um, other than the applicant for this matter. Okay. And have not heard anything. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve this as requested. Make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. 
Richard, you made a motion. Do we, do we have a second? Second. Yes. I, I think Kevin's probably, or you're abstaining. I'll abstain. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> it's carried. All right, so I don't know if you heard that, um, Matthew, but the board elected to approve your request, so that way you can get your building permits to construct that driveway. Smile. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You guys rock. Hey, I got a question for you. Um, how did you, uh, you're calling in from California today. Uh, how did you end up with this property? Uh, you know, I have a client that, over here that races uh, race cars, and he was at a track up by you guys and told me about Sheboygan and just told I he loved it, and he told me about it, and that's really what got me started on uh, Sheboygan, and, you know, it is my goal to visit this summer and say hi to you guys and really take it all in and enjoy it. Where, where are you it seems at? like right a great now? place. What town are you in? Uh, we're in the San Fernando Valley, just outside of LA. What's the temperature? <laughs> You'd love it here in Sheboygan if you could be here. Uh, it's blue. <laughs> yeah. It's well, probably about you, high 60s and blue skies outside. Well, thanks for investing <laughs> in the city of Sheboygan, and we look forward to welcoming you here, and thanks for investing in that property. Uh, the next pleasure. Thank you, guys. Is a Kim Dietz. Kim, where, oh, there you are. Uh, you were requesting to operate a massage and chiropractic business at uh, 1415 North 13th Street? Yes. Kim. And it's currently uh, non-conforming, what you're requesting, is that correct? Yes. Kim, give me one second here. Okay. Um, so, so what we're taking a look at, this is uh, 1415 North 13th Street. Is this, excuse me, is this uh, right on the corner of uh, 13th or something in Superior Avenue? Is it on? No, it's down the block. It's um, Zabel Monument is on the corner. It's right across the alley. So behind Johnson's Bakery it's on 13th right Street. Um, Arastos, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see on the picture that this was the Bast Accounting oh, Service. Oh, you're right. That, oh, yeah, I remember years ago, Choice uh, Realty was in there. Some of you guys are way too young to remember that, but anyway. Yes. So, so what we're here for is the property presently has a zoning designation of neighborhood residential. And any time there's a, a proposal to convert uh, from one non-conforming use there to another, uh, such as in this case, the accounting firm to the wellness center, the applicant has to come to the Board of Appeals for that switch. And that is why Mrs. Dietz is here today in front of the board uh, is to change the one non-conforming use to another. So if you want, you can go from there and just let us know a little bit about what you're after over there. Okay, so kind of what happened is I've been in practice since 2017 and um, the building I've been, I've been in the same building and I'm having to move because of the, the landlord has, there's a lot of noise. So most offices are not designed for what I do. We need quiet and we need walls that you can't hear through. Um, so as I was looking, the opportunity came up to purchase that and I thought, why not? So it's the perfect size. It would be a five room treatment center. Um, so there'd be other ma massage therapists. I'm hoping to get an acupuncturist in there. And then I have a chiropractor that's interested. So. It doesn't need a lot of renovation. Um, there's three rooms that would be have some minor renovations done, just bumping walls out a little bit. And then there'd be a sink put in the hallway. So. What, what are your hours of operation? That varies. Um, the chiropractor that's coming in, he works here in Sheboygan Tuesdays, Thursdays, and he's in Plymouth Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, I work like say Mondays, I'm open like 10 to eight. But if I have clients only scheduled in the morning and early afternoon, then I'm only there till then. Um, for city ordinance, we don't work past 10 o'clock. I usually don't work past eight o'clock. So I sometimes work six days a week. I sometimes work three days a week. So it all depends on, on clients and their schedules as well. But I cater to day shifters and people that work um, during the day that can only come in the evening. Yeah, there's a parking area in the back. Um, there's nothing like lined off, so it can fit six to eight cars depending on how they're parked. Okay. Yeah, there's several parking spaces in the back. I think that was one of the things that's fairly attractive, yes. you know? Yeah. 
Right, right. So, so um, behind there, uh, it's right adjacent to the alley, mm -hmm. and so there's just uh, probably about eight spaces that I was present. Do you know? Do you know? Is that temporary fence, uh, snow fence, on your property, or is that on the other? It looks like it's on the other. Okay. It looks like it looks like we may have an answer. Do you uh, are you a neighbor that has a question? Yeah. Could you step up to the podium, please? Kim, if you wouldn't mind. Yourself? Yeah. Paul Bulky, I'm an agent for uh, WNSR. Uh, we own uh, properties, two properties to the south of that building, as well as we also own a building uh, at the end of the alley. Um, that fence is actually on an easement that we have behind that parking lot for uh, 1417 and 1411. We're in the process of selling 1407 and 1411 are both for sale right now. The only uh, concern I have is we do have an accepted offer on 1407, and the parking lot behind that building um, was also used by 1411 for parking. So uh, I could not talk the person into buying that property. We were hoping to sell them both at the same time to one individual because that um, limits the parking to on street for 1411, which is right next to the property that she owns. That was my only concern. If she would have people parking in front, two of our tenants at the moment will have to be parking on street at 1411 who may have issues parking because also there is a deli across the street which takes up a lot of parking spaces, people coming and going constantly there. So that fence I put up there temporarily. Um, there had been a row of trees there, ash trees that were all dying. I had those taken down. Um, and put that fence up so that snow plowing wasn't an issue that when that lot got, for her building got plowed, it didn't get pushed into our easement. And that's why gotcha. that temporary fence was put up just for that reason. Before we didn't have to worry about it because there was trees there, they, they couldn't push through that area. So Okay, that, so you own those two properties. So you, if you wanted, you could provide parking from one of the houses to the parking lot through that easement situation. So I think as ownership, you could resolve your own issue in terms of allowing parking from one of the houses on the other. Um, but with regards to on-street parking, that there's no way that we can say, hey, their mm -hmm. customers or anyone else mm -hmm. can't use that. That's just my, open to the public. My just concern was that if she told her customers, make sure you park in the back in the lot rather than on the sure. street. And uh, if you're interested in buying 1411, we can sell it to you as well. Um, because like I said, we do have an accepted offer on 1407, which closes at on the 2nd of April. So. Um, that was my only concern for being here, um, but otherwise, you'll see on your, I don't know, you did purchase a property already? It's contingent on the Okay. Um, we do own that easement on the back side of your lot to the east okay. is access to the parking Coming lot in the back of 1407, but our 1411 is landlocked yeah. between your building and the other building, and so there is no no way of having any kind of other parking unless the new owners for 1407 would leave the people from 1411 to park in that lot, which they might, but that's no guarantee, so, okay? Okay. Kim, could you maybe mention a little bit, you had indicated, I think, in your application that you might be doing some painting and some staining or something to the exterior of the building yeah. after you get in. Yeah. Maybe you could mention a little bit about the improvements also to that exterior. Okay, so the wood that's on the building, I really, really like that, and I want to preserve that. So that'll all be um, power washed, and then the, the building itself will be painted like a warm gray color. Mm -hmm. um, there will be, with the, I don't know if you can pull the pictures up, there's... With one of the rooms in between, there's like a window. So two of the windows are gonna come out, leaving the third window, and then it'll blend yeah, in with the windows that, that go the along the side. I think it's farther in. Um, but it'll be a nice, a gray color, and then the front door will be replaced also because that's old and falling apart. Um, tomorrow I meet with Precision. They're doing, the roof needs to be replaced, so they'll be doing a um, material called Duralast. So it's, like, I guess, the Cadillac of roofs, so I don't have to replace a rubber roof anytime soon. Um, but I'm talking with him about the wood that's on the top part. I don't know if it's the, the soffice or the fascia, but about covering that. So we have to go over options because the length is too great that it would, like, warp. 
So we're gonna figure out what to do there or if we just have to replace boards. Cause it looks like on the, what would be the northeast corner, um, a truck may have hit the corner. So that has to be replaced, but um, we just have to make sure it makes sense, mm -hmm. you know, so. Sounds good. Yeah. And did you mention also how long you've been working in the city? My husband's been with the city for 30 years. So. And yourself? You've in, been, in, I've, always, I mean, I've you've, always lived. You've well, been working your business in the city. How long have you been My operating? business has been open since 2017. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, this is one, another one of these where you have uh, a building like this that's vacant and to have the opportunity to have someone improve it and upgrade it, it with the type of services that aren't that impactful um, makes a lot of sense. So staff is recommending approval. A lot of times um, matters like this come to plan commission and we have certain conditions of approval, um, things like getting their permits and occupancy, you know, if there's dumpsters, that there's dumpsters and closures. So there's a couple conditions in there. And if you guys approve it, I'd recommend you approve it with those conditions of approval. Yeah, and to address the parking, like for what I do, I have clients that are there for an hour, sometimes up to two hours, depending on what they're having done. So there's not a lot of traffic that's coming and going all day. I only see about three or four clients a day. Um, I have seen more, but that's usually on the weekends. And then um, it's like earlier morning. So I'm not sure. I know Roscoe's is really busy. Um, but for me, the location will be nice because I'm way out on business drive. There's nothing out there. I do get a lot of people that come from out of town, um, especially now with COVID with, um, the American Club, their spas aren't running at full capacity or Ostop or Blue Harbor. So I have a lot of people coming on the weekends and it, when they come in groups, I can only see one person at a time. So it'd be nice that I can send them around the corner to go get coffee or across the street to get a sandwich, but there's more options in the area that they can, they can visit. So that would be nice. Paul, did you have anything on this? Uh, Paul also invested in the neighborhood. He's with uh, Orosto. Uh, delicatessen. So we've had a lot of uh, nice investment in this particular area, uh, section of 13th with Johnson, with this, with the Rosto, um, and others that I may not be mentioning and not doing that purposely, but it, it's been a nice uh, little redevelopment in this section of this neighborhood. Anybody have any questions? Entertain a motion to approve this thing. A second. Second. Kevin. Okay, I will have a vote on it. Anybody has any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Congratulations, Kim. You got yourself a deal. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> should not be troubled. Are you giving out free certificates to uh, uh, practicing to your neighbors so we don't have any problem with parking or anything? Gift certificates or well, whatever. Anyway, All right, moving along. Anybody have any more business to bring to the meeting today? And I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you for coming. All right, thanks everybody. Appreciate it.